Hello everyone, Benny here, and in this video I'm starting a new series. And this series, it will be all about talking about, well, Minecraft computer components. Because, as of video 8 in my tutorial about building a Minecraft computer, I have stopped explaining basically how all the things work, because it would be too complicated and would really it would be unnecessary. It's more for people who are interested. So, that's why I've started this separate series that's, that's sort of designed to go along with it. And in this series, all I'm going to do is explain how all the components we build work. And this will be uploaded alongside my tutorial series about building a Minecraft computer, so that will determine the order I explain things in. I will explain them using the parts we build, so I'm not going to uh, build one component and then explain some completely different component that does the exact same thing. Because, well, that will just be harder for you all to understand. And also, if anyone wants a tutorial on how to build any of these components, I can just reference the video number. So if you see me referencing any video numbers in this series, it's probably going to be referring to my tutorial on building a Minecraft computer. So that's where you can reference if you want to know how to build any of these things. So again, this is the RAM system we built in video 8, and I'm going to talk a bit about this, a bit about why it is, and a bit, just a bit about it in general. So, to start off with, what is RAM? Why do we need it, and why do we care? Well, RAM, as the name implies, is a form of memory, which in case you didn't know, stands for Random Access Memory. Yes, and explaining why we need it is probably the easiest place to start, so I'm going to start there. Right now, chances are pretty good that you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, that means you're watching a video in general. So if you're watching a video, your computer needs RAM to process that. Because YouTube has some server somewhere that's sending all this information about the, how the video should be over to your computer, and your computer is taking that and it's remembering it. It's not writing it to your hard drive because it's not going to need this forever. As soon as you leave this page, your computer doesn't care about the video anymore. It can worry about other things. So it stores it to RAM. It's basically a place where information that you'll only need for a general short while will be. It's sort of like a computer's short-term memory. And that's what RAM is. And the reason we need it is there might be something we care about really briefly and we don't care about later, like this video. Or maybe if you stub your toe sometime. You aren't really going to need a complete list of every single time you've ever stubbed your toe. You're really just going to need about, for worry about about 20 seconds, you're worry about, ow, I stubbed my toe, that hurt, and then about 20 seconds later, you don't care anymore. <laughs> so that's sort of the reason why we need RAM, and a bit about what it is. So, hopefully you understand why RAM is so important, and I guess now I can sort of explain how it works. So you notice I have two color-coded buses. And a bus is just these long blocks of material that have all this redstone on top of them. And their sole purpose in life is to be able to hold information. <laughs> and not just hold, inf excuse me, not hold information, that's a bad word. To move information. To take information from one place, to take it from point A, to point B. That's why it's called a bus. It's a transportation. Car it has a whole bunch of information that goes inside the bus. The bus takes off, carries all the information to the other place, and all the information gets off the bus at one of several places. So, hopefully that makes sense to you. So we have two buses. One bus for writing, and one bus for reading. Th this writing bus is a green bus, the reading bus is a red bus. The writing bus is for all the information that's going to be wanted to be written somewhere, and the red bus is for reading bus. All the information is being read, read from some location. Not read, and I don't know what I was thinking there, but that's okay. So, the reason we have these two buses rather than just moving them all along in one bus, is because I mean you can't just say, okay, all information gets in this one bus, let's go, and then just takes off to every single possible location on the computer. And well, that'd be great, but. First off, it would make things heck of clogged up, because let's just take real buses in the city, for example. If you have a bunch of real buses in the city, and you decide, okay, I'm just going to have this one bus, everyone's going to use that bus to get everywhere they need. 
And again, this is like the computer emulated city, so there's no cars, there's no pedestrians, everything travels on the bus. So, you can imagine that all the problems. People would be stuck waiting on the bus, st eh, waiting for the bus just for ages and ages. That's because there's only one bus. And it just slows things down significantly. And the exact same thing holds true here. We have two buses because it speeds up things. We can have all the information being written, traveling from one place, and we can have information traveling from memory at the same time. So we can have information traveling to memory and information traveling from memory simultaneously. And that's the reason. And you would be amazed just how much that speeds up memory. So those are the buses. And now we do have this little th intermediate thing between the buses, which is the memory. These are like the bus stops. These are all the places that information can get off and go to. R but information will never ever go there unless we tell them to. And that's why we have these sort of two sets of wires. This set of wire and this set of wire that's sort of like broken up and goes all the way down. Each one of these sets of w pairs of wires, I guess you should say, each one of the pairs controls one, is the complete control set for one set of memory. So, th the white set of, of instructions controls writing to memory. That is basically says, okay, whatever information is on the, w on the bus, I want to get off at this stop. And so, if we have every information, we power this wire, the information is going to get off at that stop. So, then, all the information, we, we can transfer it, we have the ability to move the information, and they'll be sort of waiting. These are sort of like bus stops, again. They can get off the bus stops, they can get, and they can also get onto buses from the bus stop. So, if you say, okay, I want on the information from bus, from location X, at stop X, to get onto the bus, you can say that. I can say it this wire, that's what this wire does. So, this wire says, okay, information in this top, I want you to get onto this bus. And that's what it does. So that's basically how it works. So for example, I can have a bit of information, just for stake example. This doesn't reach all the way because I don't have repeaters, but since they did extract this, I guess I can go ahead and add repeaters. I'm going to add them here, instead of as far as they possibly can, for a good reason, believe it or not. So... I can go ahead and do that. Just makes things easier, hopefully. Hopefully it makes things easier. So I'll just go ahead and add this to every single one. Purely for the sake of ease, I guess. And yeah. Okay, it's so almost done. I'm sorry it took so long. And um why not? I'll just put it here just to make them brighter. Again, this isn't directly connected to the computer. That's over there. As you can see, I've made some progress since the video 8, if that's when you're watching this. And that's one of the reasons why I extracted it. So you can have it just like it was at the end of video 8. Except for a small change, which I'll go over. So, anyways, back to the example land. We have information. It's traveling along the bus. As you know, I want to get off at the first bus stop. So. There it is. Now the information has gotten off at the bus stop, and the information can keep and stay there if you really wanted to, because information is duplicable, otherwise we wouldn't have the, our famous copy and pasting. So we could have the same information get off at multiple bus stops if we really, really wanted to, but generally you don't want to. So now we have the information off the bus stop. And now it's just sort of chilling there. And this is the ram cell. It's just sort of chilling the ram cell. It's like a bus stop. It's waiting. It's waiting forever. And we can have it right there forever if we really wanted to. But whenever we want to get back on the bus, we send power here. And now it's not working. So now that leads to the question of why. I think I may have screwed this up. Because I have. And I know why, too. Okay. Now the reason why this is screwed up is because of the way I placed my levers. Because unfortunately you can't place levers like that because the power will travel through the block and into the wire, which just screws up the whole system. So now, if I write this to memory, and it actually gets written, it should be working. But it 
And I'm sorry, but I have to keep doing the debugging. I'm sorry I have to do the debugging on the screen, but right now it's not being read. Excuse me, something's not going right, and it's not being written to memory, and I know why. Because that has a delay, and that should not have a delay. So now, that was, I guess, a strange coincidence. If we write, it's still not writing. Why on earth is this not working? Oh, wait. It's because I had accidentally edited out the floor of this, and I had redid all the wiring. I forgot to do the wires right here. So if I redo all those wires, all the way down the line, everything's going to start working again. I'm sorry, that was that was my fault. Your your memory will not do that. And I'm sorry. So now, the memory is st stuck in waiting in the bus, and now it's right, you can even see it in the bus. Because it's right here, there's the information. And if I stop lagging, there's information waiting in the bus. And whenever we want, we can say, okay, get off at the bus stop. And now we're getting all the information back out. And again, information is duplicable, so as soon as we're done with the information, we can get that exact same thing back off the bus stop, because it's like they duplicate themselves when they go to the bus stop. They duplicate themselves again when they, they leave the, for the bus stop. Which is a little bit of an interesting concept in itself, but that's the reason memory works. So, that's really how memory works. And there is a point in the multiple bus stops. If we have one, for example, power right here, that's the same thing we had before, but if I wanted a different set of information, I can write it to this one, and I can write another set to, say, write this, for example, to this one. And I can get the exact same information back out. So, I'm just getting all the information out from all the my different bus stops, and okay. So now let's get out of analogy land and go into how this is really useful. So, this is all of our information. We want to be able to... So there are some times where we want some information, but we don't really want to deal with it right now. Like, for example, okay, 2 plus 2 is 4, I, so I have 4, which in binary is this. Okay, I have this 4. You know, I, I need to do more processing with my AOU. I need to figure out what what 2 plus 4 is, and I'm going to add those together. So I can go ahead and save this 4, so I can come back and deal with it later. So then I, I can get information out, so let, oh, if I have other information somewhere, I can get that. Then it comes up, okay, so 2 plus 4 is 6. So now I can have this. And now I can just save that there, so I can deal with it later. Now I can get this in, oh, I can get the 4 back out, and I can get the 6 back out, and I could add those together which ends up being this, which, I'm sorry, I'm not, I did that in math and binary, so I have to convert it in my head, and it's 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that probably was really obvious for everyone, but I was thinking in binary. So now I can get the 10. And now, maybe I want to deal with the 10 some other time, so I can write it here, and then I can go deal with the 10. And notice, since I'm writing this all to different to bus stops, or different memory locations, or memory addresses as they're called, I still have all the information from before, so I have sort of a history built up. Here I had the 4, here I had the 6, and here I have the 10. And I can just keep doing whatever for, with all my memory. So that's just an example of how memory will be useful from a more computing standpoint. So that's really how memory works. So now let's ex talk a little bit about this design. This is a horizontal based design. Basically, the buses are right next to each other and the information travels horizontal through the bus stop over onto the next bus. And that's great, but it's not the most efficient design. I and ideally you want the vertical circle design. And I've built that over here just to show you the example. So right here is the AOU like we built in the other video. And here's the registers like we you may or may not be that video yet, but you can build registers like this. This is my 7 sec function ALU, so it's a little bit bigger, a bit more complicated than before. And we do something different. When we get to the output of the ALU, the information goes back over. And you might be wondering, why on earth do I do this? The reason is, if we have the information going in here, the information goes in from the bottom, and it comes out from the top. 
and you want memory to work exactly the opposite. Uh, because now it's converging onto the bus, so now information goes in from the top and it comes out from the bottom. So, and the reason we do this is it can just travel in this information circle. So you load the information from a memory, goes into the AOU, AOU processes it, and the AOU sends it back out at the top. Now that's right where it needs to be for it to be sent into memory. So we can save that value, can read it back out, save it, read it back out. It goes in the big vertical circle. And that's a really, really efficient way to handle memory. In fact, it's the most the most efficient way to handle memory in computing. That's why really, really big, fancy, efficient redstone computers use this method. The reason we're not using this method is because, well, as you, since you're probably already a bit confused about this, is all we already know the reason. It's confusing. It's big. It's complicated. It's bulky, and that's. That's why we're not doing it. It's complicated. We don't, and this is video is all about being understandable. It's much more understandable if the buses are like right side by side, and you can have them sort of you can visualize right where the memory is. And here, the memory and the outputs and the inputs are pretty much built into the same all-in-one component, and it's sort of really, really hard for me to show you, oh yeah, this is where the memory is, and this is where the input is, and this is where the output is. I can't do that. So that's the most efficient design. This is the design we're using. If you really want the most efficient thing, you should use this design. I'm not going to show you how to build it, at least not in this video. I might upload a video later on showing you how to do that, and if it is, I'm going to have some annotation on the screen about now showing you where you can find that video so you can build it if you really want to. And, yeah, so, um, what was I about to say? Okay, that's basically everything about the most efficient design. So this is not as efficient. It's not much less efficient. This will maybe take two ticks more, something completely insignificant. In case you didn't know, two ticks is about this long. So if I flip the lever, that's how much, that's much slower it is to do this. So that's no time at all, really. I mean, it, yes, it is time, and time is very valuable in computing, but it's not uh, so significant that I think it would justify showing you the really complicated version and scaring off all my viewers. So, that's the reason that I did that. Now, there's only one other thing I really need to go over in this video, and as you may have noticed, I did torches like this for this version of the Mary module. Now, if you remember in video 8, um... Hang on. If you remember video 8, I did the torches a bit like this. But I said you could put torches on top and it would still work just fine. Well, this is showing it working just fine. The difference is, it just allow puts the boss a little bit higher. That's the reason why. It allows it, in general, to be a thinner design. So, that's about everything for this video. Th if you want to know how to build these memory, this whole memory system in general, that's in video 8. If you want to know how to build this style of RAM, that's in video 7. If you want to know how memory works in general, that's in video 6. So those are all the videos for people who want to know more. And yeah, so thank you. I will see you next time.